What's happening, hey YouTube fam? YouTube. We back. We back. back. I better said I can't have any product placements. Yeah, nah. I am getting down with this good and gather target. Yeah. I said <laughs> there's no product placement. She just mentioned the thing, but there it is. Good there it and is. gather. Coconut some pineapple. What's looking. happening? Think of this, just us sitting in your house with you, having a conversation about relationships, dating, marriage. Over a drink. Over a drink. A drink. <laughs> she's the only one that's drinking right now. She's so. like, go pour yourself Over a cup a of coffee, which is probably what I'm gonna do next. Pause, come back. We asked and polled everybody that we know. Hey, what are questions that you wanna know or you wanted to ask or haven't been able to ask mm -hmm. or you're curious about around relationships, dating, and marriage. And so actually, the question started rolling on in. They started rolling, rolling, rolling. rolling, rolling. So they we're gonna get rolling. to it right Let's now. Let's get to the first one, y'all. How do I make the first move with a girl during these times? These times are crazy, y'all. That's hot, and by these times. How are y'all doing out there in the dating world? Times is crazy right now. You know, everywhere you go, you gotta have a mask. You gotta be masked up. And you uh -huh. know, because you're masked up, that presents a few challenges, right? Because they could have catnip teeth. You don't know what's under the cover. What is a you know catnip what I'm saying? teeth? You don't, don't know. know. You don't know what's under the mask. You don't so know. Really you gotta... eyes could be really spot on. And then yeah. this area is really speaking a different language. I say you do it the same way. First, you let your eyes do the talk. And you, give a, you smile through your eyes. You smile. Where are they smizing through their eyes? Through their eyes. You got to start top shelf. You got to start with the top. I know, but then, if people aren't really getting together, where is this happening? No, you start. You have to be approachable. You have to soften oh. the eyes to approach soften and walk the, up. You remember, walk when you start up. your day, soften the eyes. Soften the eyes. <laughs> walk up to the lady and just talk normal. Obviously, you both are in a mask. I know, but where are they when you this is happening? Target, oh. Walmart, supermarket. You know, you gotta you gotta be creative. You're not gonna meet someone at the mall. You're gonna meet them at the bar. So you you may not even meet them at church right now because churches are closed. Mm -hmm. But where can you meet them? I would give you one advice. If you're a guy looking for a girl, and I hate to say this because I love this place, don't shop at Walmart. Shop at Target. Target. Go to Target. Go to Whole Foods. You can find them there because everybody needs groceries during these times. That's where the ladies are. That's, you're meeting the girl for the first time. Walk up to her, you know, compliment her, say something nice, and just have a casual conversation. Just don't be creepy. That could happen, but what about the DMs? If you know the Instagram handle is someone you're into, you can slide them and I guess hit them up <laughs> on the DM. I mean, it's a pandemic. I think the girls gotta... would be more receptive in this pandemic. But don't, don't. But again, don't be creepy. Be classy with it. Be Keep classy, it classy, guys. All right, that's all. That's talking all. about sexual things when you're in, when you're yeah. sliding into the DM. Yeah, but like, that's nobody all. Wants nobody to wants you to do that. that. Okay. But it takes a different layer of confidence right now because mm -hmm. you have a mask that's like blocking, and then that's saying "Don't talk to me" kind of situation. Yeah, you can't but give them a little. Yeah, this. It's that more one. like this. Give them. Okay, so Boom. next question. Can a girl make the first move? There's some ladies mm -hmm. out there that want to know, should I, can I, when is that appropriate? And by the first move, you mean? Like, just reach out first. Okay, like, yeah. if you're interested, okay. like, do I have to wait around what during this think? quarantine? Okay. I'm a little old fashioned, but I'm a little modern. New school? But I just feel like it's okay to kind of nudge. I'm not saying you gotta be like, meet me at the coffee shop at yeah. five. Like, which may be your speed, but I'm all for like a little nudge because I think in this time, even it's making guys way reserved. Yeah. So they don't know how to approach. Like, it's just like their whole game is totally messed up in the quarantine. I think like guys sometimes get nervous about, is she sending me the right yeah. signals? And so. And I'm from the camp that says, ladies, sometimes you gotta. Throw the guy a bone. Throw him yeah. a bone. Let him know you're interested, without looking like you're too interested. Yeah, you, know I'm saying? you don't you have play to be the game. super thirsty. Yeah, people still use that anymore. And it's okay to say, hey, I'd be open to you know meeting sometime or having a conversation or going to coffee. I don't know. Yeah. Obviously, girls, we want the guy to be like, and he should be in total Absolutely. pursuit, and he should be making those mo yeah. moves. What I'm just saying is, 
it's okay to get it going. Yeah, it's okay to introduce yourself. It's okay to, I know a lot of yeah. females that introduce themselves like I did. Just it's say awesome. hi, it's not that big of a deal. Exactly. Like, test it out. Let him show, show him what he's missing, lady. I thought he was going to say show him a little short. I was like, <laughs> wait a minute. I mean, we had seen each other a couple yeah. weeks here and there. He was standing with a group of friends, and I thought, like, you're either going to think about this all week, then you're going to go another week and think about it, yep. or you could just walk up and be normal. How oh, wait, do how guys? do you guys, you guys, me and Jacqueline, have fun together after so many years? We're ancient. Because we, know. I mean, we have been married four years. We've been dating two and a half years before that, so we've probably like known each other years. for almost seven years right now. Okay. We keep it light. We realize that we don't take life too seriously, but we do take life seriously. You know, we try to have fun. We joke. We laugh. That's, I think, for us, that's the most important thing. We always, we gravitated to each other because... We have um, we like to laugh and have fun, and that's a lot of what we do. We do goofy things. We say dumb stuff. We do dumb things. You know, you want to keep the laughter and the joy yeah. in the mar in your marriage and dating. And yeah, when you're dating someone, like make sure you guys are friends, best friends, <laughs> and yeah. that you enjoy one another. And if you were sitting in a dark room with somebody for 24 hours, could you have fun yeah. without any form yeah. of entertainment? It's just you and your conversation. We laugh a lot. We joke a lot. Yeah. So that is fun to us. Sure. But then I think in marriage, like you can lean towards more of the serious mode yeah. or I'm in high responsibility. I got to get this done. Yeah, I got to do this. So then it becomes like, even though we're jovial creatures <laughs> and going to laugh our way through the like to do lists and yeah. the kids and all this, like you still have to be intentional. Like, am I having fun? Can we check in with one another and being like, what do you like? Like, what is fun to you? Yeah. Like, what do you want me to join you in? Like, do you want me to go play basketball at and school? Some of it, you what? You know, it's some of it she can't join in. <laughs> like the basketball. Like, she can't join I in. I can't. No, she can, but she can't. You know what I'm saying? She can't. Okay. Find out yeah. what your person finds fun and then join them in it. Like, yeah. there are going to be mutual things and then there's going to be things that you're like, I don't, I don't have to do this. Thankfully, we find a lot of stuff enjoyable. We do both like to shop. <laughs> True. So there's that and you know, obviously trying new foods and yeah. having a Netflix and chill. <laughs> Capitalize on the things that you guys really enjoy together and yeah. I think that brings you laughter and fun and kind of like uplifts your spirits. Those yeah. are the things Being that intentional. You're like making being, time yeah, for be it. Be intentional with those things. Because life will get you. Who started the conversation about boundaries when you start dating and at what stage? Uh, I think we're talking about sexual boundaries. I think I started it. He did Because start it. I had the first conversation uh, about where I see her and where I didn't want the relationship to go. For me, I wanted this relationship to be one where we didn't have sex before marriage. And yes. if you want to kind of hear about why we chose that, we have another video where we talked about sex before marriage. And it's no, a good one. It's a good it's one. A so check one. it out on YouTube. I laid that foundation early in maybe like in the first month and a half maybe of our yeah. dating. Kind of like, I didn't do it the first date, obviously, but. He was like, I'm not going to like, sex with you. Yeah, yeah. I laid on too thick too soon, <laughs> but I wanted her to know where I stood. Once we had those conversations, she, I found out that she felt the same way. Which I think I was nervous to yeah. even have that conversation because you guys, Fedrick was the first guy ever that I had yeah. dated that did not want to immediately go there. Yeah. Like, no, I'm not talking about the conversation. They immediately wanted to go there. Yeah. Okay? I had two views of Frederick. Either he's going to be scared by my past, so that's ruined. I'm not a virgin. Uh, yeah. <laughs> two, he's going to be like, oh, this is too good to be true. He's immediately going to yeah. be like, we should be having sex. Da -da -da -da. But little does she know. He was such a good guy. Yeah. So we had those conversations yeah. early in the relationship. I think you just need to have it and early have because it. Just your, get it out, get it out, get on the table. And your fire and your yeah. embers of your body and are burning like a exactly. roaring Exactly. And line. because of that, we had several check-ins too. We'd have different check-ins where we just have the conversation again just as yeah. a, like a to level set. Like, Check yo, in. your hands are getting too handsy. <laughs> Okay, like my thoughts are getting yeah. too wild. Guard them thoughts. Like Rihanna said, those wild thoughts. 
Like we Rihanna, better squash them. Hey, like Rihanna said, y'all. Let's do a whole there's video about boundaries. that. We just got to do a video about Let's boundaries. Do, like there's that. different, there's different like levels that. about like it. So. Boundaries are our new video we coming. Love boundaries. New video coming. No, 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 no. No, no. Anyway, what's your opinion about long distance relationships? Mm. What's your opinion? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> go for it. Her opinion is go for it. My opinion is long distance relationships are, are hard. hard. Yeah. They require a lot of work as in all relationships, but there's an extra layer of work needed there because you don't see the person as often. So you have to be, both parties need to be actively involved, engaged in other kind of communication, whether it's on the phone, whether it's um, a Zoom call or FaceTime, whatever you got to do yes. to try to bridge the gap that is uh, there because of the lack of the physical closeness. So I but they can work. I think today's day is probably way easier. Today's day? <laughs> today's day. Today's day, y'all. Today's day <laughs> is a time for the long distance. <laughs> I'm people. talking about technology yeah. because True. I'm a little older and some of y'all watching this. Well, we have good technology to make you technology. feel like you're in the same room, right? Yes. Yeah. And so I'm saying I was in a long distance relationship at one point and it just crumbled because like you said, if the intentions aren't there, yeah. like if both of you aren't on the same page and one is just kind of like, oh, this is my girl I call, you know, because I'm bored. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Why would you ever be in a relationship like that? See, for me personally, it wouldn't I work. don't like them. For me personally, because I like to be... Touchy. Touch. I'm a touch, physical <laughs> touch person and a quality time person. And That's true. It's hard oh, to do both of that Andrew. at a long distance. Now, Jacqueline, we did have a time where we were a long distance and apart for a couple of months, and that was like three tough. Months? But we called a lot. And oh like, my gosh, I forgot about that. That months, was so. hard. So it is hard and it can do, and we're living proof that it can work. But what kind of cultural issues have you faced being from other countries? Mm. If you did not know, we are not from the same country, but Frederick Originally. The American now. So I am originally from never, the Bahamas. Never going to let that yeah, go. Yeah, I'm originally from the Bahamas, the island. <coughs> 242, if you right there, I know y'all watching. Boop, boop, boop. That's boop, 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 boop. 242. Okay, then. She didn't even do it right, but it's, it's cool. Let that slide. Anyway, she's, give me from, a second chance? she's from America. From the United States of America. No, I'm from Texas. <laughs> okay. okay. The United States of Texas. Because <laughs> that's... It's a, that's, a, that's Born Texas. and raised, hey, y'all. Texan people are Texan to the we're core. Texan. To the core. We're so, American, but so, we're really Texan. Oh, Frederick. Oh, what have we not dealt with? <laughs> one of the things we uh, had to do with was kind of like holidays. Ooh. Because holidays are celebrated differently in the islands than they're celebrated here. One, we don't have Thanksgiving. So that was a, I mean, <laughs> it's weird to say we don't celebrate that in the island. So, I mean, that was something that I knew happened over here, but it's still kind of like a, a novelty thing for me, you know, like it's Which just, is one of my favorite yeah. holidays. Like it's a big deal. And I'm like, okay, let's turkey and ham. Hey. No, no, <laughs> no, not about just turkey and ham. It actually has worked out for us because since I have find that it has such a place in my heart, he's just kind of like, eh, whatever. We can do whatever. It yeah. doesn't matter. Like, I'm not he, putting up a resistance. He's not. It's like, oh, you want to go there? Okay, fine. You want to do this? Okay, whatever. So I own that holiday. Oh, and sure. it could be Christmas too. My yeah. family literally hyped Christmas to the extreme. My mom was a believer, but my dad wasn't yeah. until way later. So we didn't really have any, like, it wasn't a, like what Frederick kind of does differently is really incorporates Christ into Christmas, yeah. which is what we are establishing new. For sure. But like mine was just about gifts and Santa and cookies. No, we, we celebrate joining Christmas and all that and food. joining for the food and having food and just having people around and you have gifts. But I mean, it's not like, it's not a big explosion of like Santa Claus coming down. <laughs> Every gift is so like, yeah. Ah! Y'all ce celebrated on like a level a thousand and yeah. we're just celebrating on a level five. You know, I was used to having a big meal on Sundays, right? Sunday Sunday was the night, the day of the week where you have like the biggest meal uh, cooked in the home. Yeah, and the Lord's. You have, yeah, yeah. You have all kind of food. People come over <laughs> for food. You know, that's yeah. kind of like an island thing. Over here for you, like y'all don't have like, in this, like a, a day when you know that there's going to be food in... Most no, houses well, in, not in the here. country. Yeah. I think with my extended family in Los Angeles, the Mexican side, that was a thing. And every Sunday, my grandma would cook every single Sunday. They knew what house, and her house was piled with yeah. people after church. So y'all did do that. We actually didn't have a lot of culturally 
differences. We grew up but very that's because similar. there's a saying that goes out if the United States gets the, a cold, oh, the Bahamas yeah. gets the flu because the Bahamas is so close to the United States in location. But a lot of that cultural influence is kind of intertwined between the, both of the countries in yeah. our case. So it's not like as if I lived in a Scotland or yeah. Australia and Where come into America babies. or Africa and come to America for the first time and where it's like totally different. That's why we don't have, didn't experience a lot of the cultural differences. Yeah, I don't feel like we had too yeah. many differences uh, yeah. because like so we were, we were both raised in Christian homes and so like our upbringing about like going to church yeah. and kind of that like big meal thing. Things music like, we listen to, like music, we listen to we, we similar listen to music. Same music. Uh, we grew up watching some of the same, same shows, same cartoons. It's like, so it's kind of like that. That's kind of what culture. Yeah. We what, have very similar college experiences. Yeah. I was a student athlete. Um, <laughs> yeah, drink, drink. <laughs> she knows. She knows. Uh, what do you feel about having friends of the opposite sex? Oh! Man. Oh, oh man, you go first. I got I got something to say about this. I think when you are getting married, so there's like your pre-married life mm -hmm. and then there's your married life. So I yeah. think we're talking about when as we're a married couple. Yeah. So I think when you're single and you're mingling, even when you're dating, like yeah. you're gonna have your guy friends, you're gonna have your girlfriends, like but as time starts going and you get more serious, yeah. there's an unraveling that happens. There's only so much space in your heart. And if you're confiding, 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 confiding. in someone that is not your serious boyfriend, your fiance, or your husband of the opposite sex, I think that's when it just gets dicey. I think we are meant to have friends like guys, girls. Yeah. Like, because Frederick is friends with my girlfriends, I'm friends with his guy friends. But you're not going to see me privately texting his friends. You're not going to see me and his friend yeah. like, hey, let's go. <laughs> Hang out. I think you can have friends of opposite, yeah. opposite sex and that's totally fine. Friends, right? When they start becoming, if it's your best friend and your mm -hmm. best friend yeah. is of the opposite sex, that's where things get a little, a little dicey. Cause saying, so for instance, I'm saying if you're about to get married to someone uh, and they have your say it's me or someone like a guy is about to be married to a girl and her best friend is another guy mm -hmm. that guy is gonna instantly not feel that he has um the complete backstage pass to her life feel like Ooh, she's giving more of herself and more of her feelings and emotions to the other guy and then it's gonna build some jealousy mm -hmm. because i mean who who wants to share a girl Right? You don't want to share the person that you're going to get yeah. married to. And this may not be the case for a lot of people. I mean, for some people, uh -huh. but it's the case for most. I don't want Jacqueline to have a best friend that's a guy. I want to be her best yeah. friend, right? Because I'm signing up to be with her forever. There are a lot of cases where you see the best friend that's an opposite sex. And then somehow feelings start coming together for the two of them. And next thing you know, they're the ones that want to that yeah. end up getting together. And this whole time... One, one of the two liked each other, never said it. I think there's people that you guys have joined in the marriage with, and they're there. They were there pre-marriage, so yeah. it's like everyone trusts each other, and there's that. So there's that. But if you are now making new friends yeah. of the opposite sex, say at work, yeah. and you haven't told your wife yeah. anything about this friend, but you guys go on secret lunch dates, you yeah, that's, go that's, that's, like... That's, you tread and you tread. No, no, no. no. In comparison, so yeah. it's like, oh, my husband, wow, he yeah. doesn't really lift me up in this way. He doesn't yeah. talk about me like the way my friend does. So now what am I gravitating towards? The thing I think that is missing instead of going to my husband. Yeah. And in these cases, you just, you're just going to strip the trust that you have with your, your 
person you're in a relationship with by doing that. About this topic. And you know, trust is a thing that is lost by the bucket loads, droplets. but only can be owned in it can only be earned in droplets. But don't make this what we just said weird. Like we don't yeah. need to be weird around people of the opposite sex. No. Just because you're in a relationship. Because those people are weird too, where you're like <laughs> Calm down. I'm just asking like, how your day was. Nobody's trying to get with you. <laughs> he was like, oh God, I can't. I have a girlfriend. <laughs> how do you keep Jesus, God, as a foundation of your relationship? I think you have to have a relationship to keep with him as a foundation <laughs> yes, <laughs> with the Lord. True. First of all, step one, you got to have a relationship with him. You, you need to set time aside uh, despite the craziness of the day to talk and commune and hang out together and and just uh build our relationship you have to always choose to cultivate it and continue to work at it because uh life's gonna continue to pull you away and try mm -hmm. to pull you away from jesus and having him as the center and last thing have some friends that are accountability partners for you or some mm -hmm. people that you look up to that can speak into your life That's and good. to pull you back when you're when you're getting a little wonky and just like hey they can call you out and be like hey you're being weird you need to go talk to Jesus. But for us personally, I think it's individual relationship with Christ. So Jesus is concerned about how I'm growing. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of times we take to the Lord, he ain't doing this. He, he needs to change here. Yeah. He needs oh, to do, yeah. you know, when you really just need to be working on, you know, <laughs> minding your business and asking the Lord to change you. And as you grow, the relationship will continue to grow, but it's also important to come together yeah, in prayer absolutely. and in worship in those intimate moments that you spent, that's e maybe easier for you to spend alone with the Lord. Oh. You have to bring that together. Even if it's uncomfortable, I don't, I have never prayed with my husband before. Like ask, hey, can we pray today yeah. just for five minutes? Like, can I pray for you? Let's worship together. Worship is a very vulnerable, intimate time with the Lord that you can share as a family. So I also think like we, I love going deep. <laughs> and I, but I know I'm more the one who's gonna be yeah. like, guess what? The Lord told me this, da, da da this is what I wrote. So now I make it a point to say, Frederick, what is the Lord telling you today? Um, because Frederick is a journaler too, and he writes yeah. down his thoughts and what the Lord's saying. And so I'm nosy, but it also pertains to our family. So I think when we get in check with that and be like, what is God speaking to you? Because he could be speaking something to you that is really, I need to know for this whole family. What slash how will you teach Zane and your new baby is our son, two year old about your backgrounds and being biracial. Here's what we're gonna teach them. You can answer that. You're gonna wait till the next video because we're gonna have to make a part two because this video is too long. So we'll tell you about that later. We got so much other questions we gotta answer right in the next video. So part two coming at you. As always, thanks for watching. Hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe, punch the scribble. Punch the scribble. Punch, smash, <laughs> kick, whatever you gotta do to that subscribe button, hit it. And uh, share this video with friends if you know of friends that can benefit from this. And we'll see you next time. And we'll see you next time with another drink. <laughs> you with another non sponsored drink. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> Bye. He was like, oh God, I can't, I have a